God is very intentional about you. God is intentional with the things he put inside of you. God is intentional with the make of you, the uniqueness that you are. God is intentional, but if you're not careful, the noise will lead you to a place of comparison. And you are like, but I'm not looking like that person. My shape is not exactly like that person. Welcome back to my YouTube channel. It is such a pleasure to have you back in today's video. And if this is your first time watching, welcome. I want to speak about staying sane in a noisy world. Now, first of all, why do I say the world is noisy? Of course, the overload of information and the intrusion that we experience in our lives daily through social media is already enough to say that it is noisy. Because at the comfort of your home, on your bed, in your most private place, there is no privacy. Again, it's like an opinion pool that everybody has opinion on every comment in every post. And anonymously, everybody have what to say about whatever happened. All of this, you can know that we are living in a noisy world. First of all, let me take you to the scripture that Jesus described our world. In Matthew chapter 11, Jesus said, Now, to what can I compare the people of this day? They are like children sitting in the marketplace. One group shouts to the other, We played wedding music for you, but you wouldn't dance. We sang funeral songs, but you wouldn't cry. Now, what was Jesus trying to say? It is a picture of our generation. Now, people are doing things expecting your response. It is like, we have played this song for you. Why are you not responding? Why are you not joining us? Because what does the noise do? It is trying to get your attention. There are so many things fighting for our attention in our daily lives. And now with the influx of how we are consuming the things that we see on social media, this noise is loud that we might forget ourselves. And I feel like the devil is taking advantage of believers in this area such that we are becoming ignorant of how these things are affecting us. Now, Jesus in his time when he made this statement, he walked around and he said, when John the Baptist was with them, he wouldn't drink and he wouldn't feast with them. They said, ah, John as a demon. When Jesus was with them, Jesus drank and sat and played. And they said, oh, friend of sinners, such a sinful man. And he said, this is our generation that people want you to do as they say. It is as if they are constantly trying to tune you to become like them. And that is why it is wild out here. Now, stay sane in a noisy world to me means being productive with your life, with your time, with your resources, and also being able to take care of your overall health, which is your mental health, your spiritual health, your physical health, psychologically, your reading up, and then you are intentional. That is what I mean by staying sin in a noisy world because it is a world calling for your attention so if you can hold your attention and get a focus then it will help you stay sane one of the things like i said is idleness idleness will lead you to a place whereby you'll be bored you'll be anxious and you start having negative thoughts it leads to other negative things with impulsive behaviors and lack of creativity and idle mind is the devil's workshop or the devil's playground. Idleness that places you in a place of boredom, boredom now gives the devil an opportunity to minister to you, which is the word I would like to use, because now he makes his suggestion and his opinion. And the devil doesn't necessarily have to make suggestion and opinion for you because there are already voices online on this small device we are carrying on social media who are telling you this is what you need to do because you are bored and you are idle since you cannot you're not creative now there are suggestions all around there are these noises that you would find yourself falling a victim to which is people get bored and then they fall into masturbation christians get bored and they fall a victim to pornography People get bored because I don't know what to do. Or I don't have what to do. Oh, I don't have a job. I lost my job. I know these are real issues of life and they are not things that I'm trying to minimize the effects of it in your life. But staying idle will help the devil take you as his playground, making suggestions to you 
and leading you to a place that necessarily you would not get to, which will be at the end destructive to you and your overall well-being. Idleness doesn't just affect people who don't have anything to do. Even people who have work in their hands, idleness can present itself as procrastination. One of the effects of it, you can just procrastinate. Oh, I will do this. I will do it. I will do it. I will do it. But when are you doing it? Because you don't have a focus. You are not determined. So now you are idle. There is something in your soul that makes you feel empty somehow. And it is a place of emptiness that you need to get filled up so that you can be active and proactive. Now, when I say idleness or an idle mind is a devil's workshop, I know immediately people will now take, come to a place whereby I don't want to be idle. So now let me get busy. So a lot of people become busy and they are just busy for nothing. There is a good busy, but then most times when people are running away from idleness, they are running into the bad side of busy, which is they are living a distracted life. They are trying to distract themselves so that they will not fall victim for all these suggestions that whatever, maybe they are already struggling with these suggestions that they got through their idle moments. Now they are afraid of these things. They want to get out of it. They get distracted and they become so busy. Now they get to a place of being burnt out. Even people that are working now outdo themselves, try to walk, walk and get burnt, burnt out. And sometimes stress comes up on them. Anxiety now visits them. And now they are in this place that they have relational issues, impulsive behaviors. So what does this mean? I said it. As much as an idle mind is a devil's workshop, a distracted mind and a mind that lacks focus is the devil's sitting room. Yeah, the devil worked on the idle mind, gives suggestion and all of that. But when he sees a distracted mind, a busy body, a busy person who is just overly busy, he just sits and crosses his legs because he's like, this one is going to kill himself. This one will kill his or herself. So it does not even need to do anything because your busyness will get you killed. You're not taking care of your health. You're not being aware of yourself. You're not self-aware because you don't know how to sit and muse and ponder and think. So in this place of busyness, you are now making poor decisions. You are now having decreased creativity. Your capacity is being in, like... Is being shrinked. So all of these things, what am I trying to say? You need to learn how to stay sane in a noisy world that is calling for your attention. And what does it mean? It's grab your attention and fix it on the right thing. Paul Apostle in Philippians chapter 4 verse 8 said, And now, dear brothers and sisters, one final thing. Fix your thoughts on what is true, honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about these things that are excellent and worthy of praise. Now, this is a beautiful scripture because instead of you to stay in a place of idleness where you get bored, you are now intentional to fix your thoughts on things that are true. Now, when you start talking down on yourself or having negative thoughts about how bad you are or whatever negative thoughts comes to you, is that true? to the personality that God made you? No, it's not. Is that a noble thought? No, it's not. Is that admirable? It's not admirable. Can you say the things you say to yourself to someone else? You would not. So why are you saying it to yourself? Why are you talking down on yourself? Oh, I am just, I'm not beautiful. I'm not this. I am not strong. I Whatever it is, whether it's as a result of your shame and whatever. The Bible says that for your shame, I will give you double honor. So what is the problem? Instead of staying in a place of idleness or overly busy that you are always active and then, but you don't have a focus. Scripture says, fix your thoughts, which is get a focus. Get your attention together. Now, let me be real. We get so lost that a lot of people now are so overly busy, not doing anything, but just they are scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. You don't even know what you're looking for. What are you looking for? And you keep on scrolling, scrolling. Oh, one video to another. Are you even picking the lessons 
or now people are not necessarily going to the things that are educative because an idle mind doesn't really need things that are educative so you just need a distraction from the idleness so now you're looking for things that will amuse you you're looking for things that will make you just laugh oh let me just find a place to laugh it out it's good laughter is good it's a medicine that scripture says but if that is all you feed yourself with that is junk that is not real food and this is me telling you that is why you need to be intentional with your life with the food you are feeding yourself with whatever you are picking up on the pages that you're scrolling it is about intentionality that's how to stay sane in this noisy world because there's too many information and most of it are not true i read a quote which i love so much and it said the truth would always turn staring you in the face daring you to disagree begging you to understand and to do what needs to be done now as opposed to the noise the noise might be loud the noise could be loud or the noise is loud but the truth is firm the truth has a foundation it cannot be shifted but the noise as much as it's loud it will just become a trend and wave out so that's why you don't need to depend on this trend whatever trend it is that you are feeling like oh i don't want to miss out no come back to the truth i know that the truth is actually founded in the word of god whatever is true whatever is noble whatever is admirable whatever is worthy of praise think about these things so when you want to get to things or when when you are being pulled to do things you're not supposed to do are they worthy of praise if they are not please just save yourself the trouble and stay away from it because it is as a result of the noise of course you know naturally noise can upset your thinking that you cannot have a focus naturally i remember being in school that was why we, we got beaten this is africa we, we got beaten by teachers so much because when you will make noise the class rep will write names of noise makers and once they write names of noise makers and your name is found there oh, sorry for you because you'll be treated like a criminal somehow why did they hate noise so much in that place because it can upset the brain and shift your focus and you cannot really think you cannot really stay and muse and that is why the noise has gotten into our brains that we can't sit with ourselves and be self-aware like david said in psalm 143 verse 5 i remember the times that i used to sit and muse about the works of God. Just, just let me consider. Let me look at the sky. Let me walk out and look at the sky and just consider how beautiful the sky is. How beautiful the waves. Look at how they are looking like graphics. This is the works of God. These are things that if you sit with yourself and muse, consider, ponder, you will see the beautiful things that God did in you. Like the psalmist said, that I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And it says that, and my soul knoweth this so well, which means he has sat down to think about himself and think about the, just the creativity that, that is, that God has brought to him. You have wise ideas flow through your head. That is God. You are wonderfully and fearfully made. You are distinct. So now the noise can come and trouble you so that you will not even sit and be self away. Because if you are even self away, you would consider the weakness you have and know that you can present your weakness to God so that his strength can be your complement. Because like Paul said that I will glory in my weakness because when I'm weak, God's power, God's strength is being more manifested in me. Now, it is a place for you to come. If you are self away, your weakness will not be something you are ashamed of. Your weakness should not be something you are ashamed of or something you are trying to run away from. Your weakness should be something that you present to God. God, this is this weakness. I know I'm weak in this area. I want you to take this weakness and then I'm depending on your strength. That is a person that is trying to stay sane and be intentional in a noisy world. That is the person that is trying to work on themselves, on their self, on his or herself. I would need you to come to that place that you are intentional. Look, God is very intentional about you. God is intentional with the things he put inside of you. God is intentional with the make of you, the uniqueness that you are. God is intentional, but if you're not careful, the noise will lead you to a place of comparison. And you are like, but I'm not looking like that person. My shape is not exactly like that person. And it looks like on the trend, people are looking for a figure eight. 
And that is the shape that is trendy. And God is like, I didn't make you like that because I made you unique. And what I put inside of you tells who you are more. Yeah. Let me read this scripture in Isaiah 55. It says, why spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Why pay for food that does you no good? Listen to me and you will eat what is good. You will enjoy the finest food. Come to me with your ears wide open. Listen and you will find life. Now, this scripture is not about physical food. It's about the food you feed yourself. Why are you listening to things that are not healthy for you? Why are you scrolling on things that are not beneficial for you, that do you no good? Why do you spend your money on food that does not give you strength? Because definitely you're wasting your data, you're spending your data. <laughs> That's your money. And also, on the psychological part of it, when you pay attention, you are buying something. You are giving something your attention. You are paying. You are buying something. So why do you pay? Because the time you spend to pay that attention, that time is enough money. Your life is propagated with time. Your one minute is not a waste. Your one minute is very important to you. You can sit down and meditate on the word of the Lord. You can sit down and meditate on the wonderful things that God has ahead of you. You can just sit down and muse. Because we have lost the art of musing in our environment. That now we are waiting for voices like Jesus said. These people are playing, oh, I'm playing a wedding song for you guys and you are dancing. Oh, we are playing a, a, a sorrowful song, a funeral song. Oh, you are mourning. You are responding to the culture. You are responding to what they are doing. Oh, this is the now trend. And you are following the trend. Child of God, God loves you so much. And God does not want you to go insane with this noise. He wants you to be sane in this noisy world that is calling for your attention. That is why Jesus made the declaration, Come to me, all you that are carrying waste, that are labor and have heavy learning. Whether it's through the noise of religion, because that's part of it. Whether it's through the noise of legalism, come to me, I will rest you. Now, come to a place of knowing that you being intentional is a thing of having a sound mind. And sound mind is not a work of your effort. Sound mind is a product of the Spirit of God on your inside. Second Timothy 1 7 says, For God has not given us a spirit of fear and timidity. But of power, love, and self-discipline, which is of sound mind. So God has given you his spirit to live inside of you so that through the spirit, you have a sound mind. I hope this video is beneficial. Let me know in the comments, what are those things that have been affecting you through this noise that you hear? Or what are the things you're struggling with? Maybe through idleness or through over busyness. How can you become more intentional with your life so that you'll be sane in this insane world? Let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching today's video. I am Owem Akban. This is my YouTube channel. Do so well to subscribe to this channel. I would like to hear from you. Thank you and see you in my next YouTube video. Bye.